Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm talking about the importance of white balance, how to adjust it quickly, easily, and powerfully in Luminar AI so that you can make the photo look the way the photo needs to look because let's be honest, a lot of the times we just need to adjust white balance. Here's the photo. This is a shot from Paris one evening and this is something that's really common for me because I shoot a lot in cities and I shoot around the edges of the day, so blue hour, sunset, and evening as well. And that is city lights, like the ones on this cafe, end up looking really yellowy, sometimes green. I don't like that at all, and so I always end up fixing the white balance, and I've kind of figured out some things that work for me in doing so, and I wanna talk about that in this video. So in the light tool, you've got a few different ways to adjust light balance. I'm gonna talk about that, but the first thing I wanna talk about is the reason why I adjust white balance first versus doing other things first. So if you might, uh, you know, some people may come in and say, well, let me look at this photo. Maybe I need a little bit of contrast. Maybe I should put on the highlights, lift the shadows. Maybe I should give it a little bit of a, you know, S curve over here in the tone curve tool. And for me, all that's done is make that yellow section on the left just worse, right? So if you look at it, there it is before, and there it is now. It's just gotten brighter and more saturated, and that's because contrast and things like that impact what colors look like. So then you might come in here and say, well, then I'm going to go into the luminance of the yellow and pull that down. And I'm going to go into the saturation of the yellow and pull that down. And all it does now is just kind of make that section look flat. Um, and it just honestly, I think it looks worse. So then you might come in and say, well, then I need to make it kind of bluer, right? And so that starts to help. But again, it's really, I think, very flat. And so what I like to do is just take care of all that white balance stuff first. So I'm gonna hit reset on those tools and go back to my base photo. So for white balance, you got a few different options. Up here, you've got a drop down. So I'll just click through you uh, and show you what these look like. There's a daylight setting, cloudy, by the way, it's a raw file and I shot it in auto white balance, which is what I always do simply because um, I don't wanna mess with that and it's easy enough to fix in post. So just FYI, some of these things you can adjust in the field if you change your white balance setting. I don't do it. I don't really see a need to personally, just personal opinion. Um, uh, as I click through these, you can see kind of what they do to the image. Tungsten looks okay, not great, but it's definitely closer to the direction I wanna go. And these other ones, frankly, just look terrible. So um, I almost never, in fact, not almost, I never use the white balance drop down. The other thing is you have this little eyedropper, so you can click, and as you hover, it says pick a target neutral. So you can come in here, maybe click something like that, and pick a target neutral, which is you're saying this is neutral gray, and therefore adjust the white balance accordingly. And it adjusted it some, but not that great. If I hit reset and come in here and try a different area, maybe that's a little bit more gray. That's a little bit closer. In fact, that's a lot closer to what I would normally do. However, I don't like to use a dropper either because frankly for me, it ends up being guesswork. And what I like to do is just grab these sliders and move them. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come in here to temperature and I'm gonna pull this down a bit because it's just way too yellow. So I want it to be more blue. It's basically blue hour. Um, you know, nearly evening, and I'm gonna adjust the tint as well. And all I'm trying to do is get this, um, I call it a romantic scene, right? I mean, it's Paris, it's long exposure, you got cars going by, you got a bicyclist that went by here, you got a little cafe, it's blue hour, did I mention it's Paris? It just kind of screams like romantic lighting. And to me, that's a softer, more gentle light. It's not this harsh, bright, yellow kind of barf that I had to start with. So. I think I'm looking a lot better there. And then I'll come in and do my adjustments. Like, you know, hey, maybe give a little bit of contrast, maybe put on the highlights a little bit, maybe a little bit of an S curve, you know, that sort of thing. And maybe put on the whites a tad. What I'm looking at is how bright is this section on the left? Because it's definitely brighter, but I don't want you to be totally distracted by it. So if you look at the before and where we are, there it is before and there it is now. I think the yellow looks better, but it's not fully tamed, so this is where I go into color, and I go into that HSL section as I was in earlier. And so here, I'm gonna pull down that saturation. I also wanna pull down the luminance a bit, and I think I'm gonna go back and get a little bit more uh, saturation reduction. I'm trying to reduce that intensity of yellow because also yellow, uh, obviously close to kind of orange and red, and those warm colors can really grab someone's attention, and I don't wanna overdo that. And in fact, I'm actually gonna change the hue a little bit, make it a little bit more orange. 
So I'm just kind of experimenting here. But if I do a before and after, if you look at that, there it is. It's more greenish, kind of a fuchsia yellow uh, and kind of green. But if I turn this on, now it's it's toned down a little bit in my view. And so it's a, it's a little bit more orange, a little less bright, a little less intense. I actually might go into the luminance and pull that down some more. I think you just want to be careful because you don't want to really darken it like that. So just kind of watch what you're doing. But I think, you know, I don't know, somewhere maybe in here, I think looks pretty good. And let me just check that saturation again. Because again, I don't want to remove that color. I think um, yellow and the blue look good together. They're opposite colors. They're across from each other on the color wheels, so they're complementary. So I want to keep the yellow there. I just don't want it to be the way it was, which if you recall, was that. I mean, just way over the top, and that was terrible. I want to tame that a little bit. And so um, I might give back a tiny bit of yellow saturation. Now that I've done that, I might go back to light and just po possibly play with highlights a little bit more because it's still fairly bright. So I don't want to go higher, but I don't want to go too low because if I go all the way negative, you'll see it's it's really flat, like on the tabletops and you know up here, like in that window and these tabletops and some of these sections, it's just way too flat. So I'll often just reset the highlights and then come back here and just start dragging it. And what I might do is I got to this point, so it's like negative 70s, and it's starting to look a little bit blue, a little bit too washed out in those areas. So I'm just going to start pulling that back. And really, I just experiment. And I'm kind of mostly looking at the tabletops. And I think if I back out now, I think that looks pretty good. And that's really it. I mean, the only other thing I might do to this photo, and this is a fairly simple edit, is just add a little bit of a vignette, simply because I like them, but I don't really need a, a heavy vignette. So maybe something like that, maybe a tiny bit of inner light. Just want to be, uh, be careful with the inner light because um, it defaults to the center. You can, of course, choose subject. I could put it over here if I wanted to and kind of adjust that, which um, actually looks pretty good. In fact, I think I'm going to leave it like that. Um, and then once again, whenever I move that inner light, uh, that subject, I come back and experiment with how much inner light do I want to add because there I'm brightening up the walkway, which is kind of nice because that is kind of a line and it follows the line of that bicycle light into the photo. So not a bad look there. In fact, I think I like it over there to the right. And it also creates a little bit more light balance in the photo because it's so bright on the left side and that brings a little bit more brightness there. So I actually think I like that. I'm going to close that. Let me just turn off the vignette. Yeah, there it is before and there it is after. You can see with the vignette, it really does help you move that light around, which I think is fantastic. Uh, specifically, the inner light and choosing the subject is what does that. So that's my video for today. There's the before. Really yellowy orange, kind of that uh, really yellow green, I should say, yellow kind of almost fuchsia. Just honestly, I looked at it. I was like, God, that, ew, these colors. But a little bit of white balance work, a little bit of a couple of other things, and you can just really have a huge impact on your photo in just a couple of minutes, to be honest. And so to me, that's the power and the flexibility of white balance. That's why I think it's such an important adjustment. I honestly move temperature and tint in probably 99.7% of my uh, photo edits. And of course, 99.7% of statistics are made up on the spot. You've probably heard that before. So um, I use it a lot, though. Anyway, that's why I use it, because it's powerful, it's easy, and I prefer the sliders, although, you know, do it the way you prefer to do it. I just like the sliders because I want creative control, and the other stuff is basically not quite uh, as much custom control, in my opinion. That's it, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas about how to use white balance to your advantage in your photos. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you in the next video, and adios.